Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator of Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. As many of you know by now, before I became the curator of the Battleship, I spent a number of years as the site manager on the Coast Guard Cutter, formerly known as Taney, here. And we have just completed dry docking her at the Curtis Bay Coast Guard Yard. She, the year is now 2020, uh, in case you're watching this in the future. And she was last dry docked in 2003. Prior to that, she was last dry docked in active service in 1983, right here in Curtis Bay. If you've been a fan of this channel for a while, you might have seen our video a couple of months ago on the dry docking of USS Slater. Slater is approximately the same size as Taney, some 21 feet shorter, uh, roughly the same width, uh, about half of the displacement because she's a lighter built ship, but uh, both ships are getting similar work done. However, uh, the way Taney was dry docked is significantly different than what we narrated in the Slater video, which in case you haven't seen it, is in the comment section down below here. Uh, Slater was in a floating dry dock, which meant they filled the wing wall tanks and sunk the dry dock, pulled Slater in, and then pumped those tanks empty in the floating dry dock to raise the whole dock under her. On Taney, she is in what's called a ship lift, which is the main facility here at the Curtis Bay Coast Guard Yard. And the ship lift uh, is essentially an elevator. You tug the ship into the elevator when the elevator is in the down position, and then you lift the elevator under the ship, and then you pick the whole ship out of the water. The ship is sitting on a rolling cart, or rather a series of rolling carts that can be coupled together depending on the length of the ship. In Taney's case, 100 meters or 327 feet. Uh, and then the keel blocks are set on top of that rolling cart. Once the ship lift is all the way up out of the water, uh, you essentially use a dockyard mule or a sort of tractor to pull the entire ship on rails uh, into what, what's essentially a giant ship parking lot. And here at the Coast Guard Yard, they can accommodate as many as a half a dozen vessels, depending on their size, here on the uh, ship lift. And because they're in rails, as different vessels need to go back in the water to be fleeted or uh, to return to active service, they can shuffle their ships around in the parking lot uh, while work is being done on them. So even though it's been some 17 years since Taney was last out of the water, we're very pleased with what we're seeing. Uh, her zincs are probably about 50 or 60 percent deteriorated in most places. We've only found one that was completely deteriorated. Um, check out our video on Slater for more talk on that, but they uh, prevent the similar metal corrosion of the various types of steel used in the vessel. Uh, they're in pretty good shape. We do have it set up so a diver can go in the water every couple of years and unbolt the old ones and put on new ones. So they haven't been there for 17 years. Uh, there isn't too much marine growth on the hull, which I was expecting to see a lot. And now that the ship is high and dry, we aren't seeing her continue to leak, which would be holes in peak tanks or fuel tanks or other places. There's just one place that's leaking, which is the starboard shaft alley, uh, which was water leaking into the ship. And one of the reasons we brought her into dry dock here. Uh, so we're very happy to see that being the only water leaking out right now. And that is something we're going to address while the ship is in dry dock. Another difference you'll notice between Taney and Slater, Slater still has her propellers. Taney lost hers back in 2003. The museum intentionally removed them because they're manganese bronze. It's a dissimilar metal from the steel shaft. And uh, there was worry that it was going to cause further corrosion. Plus, the weight of the propeller sitting on the shaft would crush the packing that keeps the shaft watertight. And with that already being a fail point, uh, I'm very glad that those propellers were removed. And now one of them sits on the pier so you can actually see it, unlike Slater's, which are still on the ship. Uh, Battleship New Jersey does still have all four of her propellers on board, but she hasn't been out of the water since 1991 when she was still an active vessel. So there has not been a chance to remove them and a discussion has not been had yet. So Tammy's gonna spend the next three weeks out of the water, 
here at the Coast Guard Yard, and they're going to pressure wash the marine growth off of the hull. And then if they find any suspect areas, they'll use a high pressure wash to blast the nearly white metal. Uh, if they blow through any rivets, they're going to ring weld them back in place, patch any holes that, that might be caused by that. And uh, they're gonna blank over the two sea chests in the auxiliary diesel generator room, which were not blanked over last time. Uh, and there's a couple of interior spaces which are gonna get grit blasted and coated. The, uh, above the forward peak tank and the pit sword compartment, which are pretty badly corroded and uh, too tight of a space for historic ships and Baltimore staff to get while she's pier side. Uh, if you would like to support Coast Guard Cutter Taney during her dry docking, there's a link in the description below to Historic Ships in Baltimore's donation page. Uh, the more money that's donated, the more we can expand the scope of work. If you would like to support Battleship New Jersey and our YouTube channel in particular, there's also a link in the description which will... Uh, take you to our GoFundMe campaign. And any money you donate there goes right back into our channel, which allows us to make trips like this to help other ships uh, and to create new content for you guys. Speaking of new content, remember to like, share, and subscribe. We try to put out new content several times a week uh, and expect to see some content from the ships in Baltimore in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching.